So today we're going to fix an HTC M7-1. Um, the screen itself was very cracked, very badly cracked. My two-year-old threw it on the ground and split it. Um, when you turn it on, you can actually tell that the digitizer itself, the, the LCD in the background, is completely split. The, the picture is not displaying very well at all. I uh, went to Amazon and I got a new digitizer and I will be opening this up and exchanging the digitizer out and uh, hopefully at the end of this it'll all come together and work well. Here you can see the contents of what came actually in the package. Um, it had some good packaging with it and it was wrapped up. Everything was received really nicely. Here is the digitizer itself. You can see it comes with all of the cables and all of the components that you need in order to actually exchange it out. And it also comes with a little tool set. So I've seen a couple versions of the disassembly videos where um, they talked through how to take things apart. All of them seem to agree that the best tools to actually do these are plastic pieces. And so I raided my um, guitar pick stash and I kind of grabbed a couple different thicknesses and a couple different um, stiffness levels of that plastic in order to separate the screen from the, the back end piece. You'll need a, a small paper clip uh, bent out a little bit and then some of the other people recommended having a kind of a credit card or an ATM card. I think today I'm just going to be using a simple card same material but it's it seems to be thinner and I really don't care if this thing gets ate up in the process. Uh, the, the biggest thing on this is to make sure you're using plastic uh, little tools to take this apart. Alright so for the first step what we're going to do is we're going to use our little pry tool that they sent in the mail and we're going to remove this silver volume knob rocker and I'm just going to come in from the top and then put some pressure on it and pop it out. Here's what it looks like whenever it has been removed. You can tell that it did not get damaged at all um, and is still in very good condition. So after applying a little bit of pressure I've um, now got the tray itself to come out a little bit from the SIM card. So all I'm going to do is just take the tray and continue pulling on it. A little hard to do one-handed but you can see how it just slides straight out and then you can put it away for after you have replaced the, the digitizer on the phone. The next part of the disassembly really comes down to the clips that are being used to hold the, the phone together. There's six of them on each side, which really helps hold the phone really close together. I'm going to start here where I've exposed part of the, the, the seam, the difference between where the volume rocker is and the, the faceplate here. And I'm going to use my a uh, pry tool as well as my picks and I'm going to separate these and try to get the clips themselves to come apart. You can see how I've kind of just uh, slid the pick in a little bit here to get a little bit of a, an angle on it and it, it started coming up pretty pretty easily um, and you can start to see the separation. I'm going to start to use two hands and, and two picks to kind of get in there and, and provide some of the separation and get these two pieces separated. So when I was in, uh, in the process of slowly working this thing apart, I accidentally hit the power button as I was working around the upper corner and I saw the, the thing come on. <clears throat> so I thought I'd you know stop for a second and, and show you just how cracked and not working very well that, that digitizer is and it's just, it's toast. So I thought it would be funny to kind of show you guys the condition of how crappy this was after it got uh, dropped on the floor by my two-year-old before I shut it down again. You can also kind of take a look at the progress I'm making. I'm just taking a long time and I'm being really careful about it, but I'm starting to separate those two pieces apart. Uh, there's a little bit of glue, so take your time. Don't force it too much. Uh, but it is going to require a little bit of effort and force to get it open. Okay, I finally made it about halfway around. <clears throat> you can see that I decided to actually pull in a different uh, gift card 
because that seemed actually to be the best way to get into there. I'm still using the picks. Um, they're in pretty rough shape now, as you can see. It, it does actually take quite a bit of work to get this thing separated because it's, it's on so tight, but um, I will keep showing you how I'm disassembling this. So I made a pretty significant um, <clears throat> piece of progress here on getting into the uh, edge. I was able to separate the edge from the casing. I'm going to continue to work this around, but I think that I'm almost there. I just got it apart. Um, there was a lot of glue at the very end there, but with a little bit of force, you could feel the glue was actually on the back over here and probably over on the side. I don't know if you can see the glue residue as easily as, as I can here. You can kind of see it. You can see here the end result. I've got the back off and the digitizer um, separated. Um, the back did get a little bit scraped up. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but um, it did get a little bit scratched. Not too bad. I'm fairly happy with it. I think the biggest um, little bit of scratch happened right there at the side. Other than that, it actually looks really good. I would really recommend using the credit card technique as, as that really helped out much more than any of the other ones. Um, they're also a little bit more durable. Uh, the picks got quite a bit ate up. <laughs> I wouldn't use a pick that you actually expected to ever be able to use again because they really do take a beating. And the, uh, the gift card that I was using as well took quite a beating. Uh, I think most of the videos that you're seeing online are people who have actually taken them apart before and putting them back together because there's quite a bit of glue on these things. And the way that they do it whenever they're taking them apart, they make it look so easy. And to be honest, it's really just not. So what I've done is I've just kind of taken the, um, taken the phone and the, the back I'm going to set off to the side now. And I'm going to bring over the digitizer that I got online. And when, you're, when you've got it like this, you can actually really see how the rest of the guts are going to need to come out. You can see basically just by matching up where the, the holes for the screws are going to go. And then you can build in how you're going to take them apart and take the, the, the essence of the phone out of this digitizer, the broken one, put it over here, and then made up the cables, which are over here, and over here, as well as up there. So that'll be the next part, and then I'll show you the assembly piece. Okay, so what you can see now is um, how I'm going to match up the, the different screws. And what I like to do is usually put it on a piece of paper and get a pen. And then I'm, I'm looking to match up all of these screw receipt slots. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew these screws. And then over here on the side, or at the other side of the piece of paper, mark out where the screws came from and which screws go where. So I'm going to do that now off the camera and then I'll show you how that looks. Okay, here you can see the disassembly of the screws. Um, I've kind of drawn them out and mapped them. Uh, the, the biggest thing to take note of is where the, the wires are that we're working on now, that I'm working on now. Um, you'll need to remove some of this uh, black electrical tape that covers the wires. They, the, they're right here and right here. And one of them is actually hidden under here. It's under a uh, connection that goes through a ribbon cable. And then you just pull up on this piece, which is a connector, and you can see how it's connecting right there. But there's two things that we need to get under here. One of them is this screw right here, which is connecting the, the guts to the base and also this ribbon cable that's right next to the connection here on this side. So we'll need to detach that, get that screw out of there, and then that whole piece should be able to come off and transfer over to the new digitizer. Okay, so it took a little bit of uh, very careful effort 
And um, what I did was I carefully pulled back the top part to the bottom. Um, you can still see that the, the battery itself is still connected um, with the ribbon cable. Um, the, the entire internal components carefully peeled away from the battery and it looks like it's ready to be transferred as once I get the battery out. Okay, so the battery came out. I have to admit that sucker is glued in there and it was probably one of the most nerve-wracking parts to get off. Um, you can see all of that glue that's on the bottom of the old digitizer. I still have the speaker to take out from the top, but it looks like now the battery's ready to be placed back in, and then I can pop this back in, route those cables through in the new digitizer, and you can also see that the new digitizer came with a gasket that was around here. I was a little worried about that because as I took off the top part, um, the, gas cart, the gasket around the speaker system here um, folded back a little bit, uh, but it looks like since it's included in the new digitizer that I'm not going to have a problem with that. But that blue piece does need to be removed and then everything needs to go back together. So I finally got the speaker out. And um, to do that, I had to actually resort to bringing in a, a jeweler's uh, flathead screwdriver and actually going in from the side and pressing really hard. The, um, you can see it wasn't damaged at all um, at the edge here, but I did have to, to get around this sealant that's over here um, sealing the speaker area. Okay, so here's the uh, the innards that have been transferred onto the new digitizer. Um, pay particular attention to the the cable that was over on this side that comes onto the new digitizer, and route the the digitizer over the battery, the digitizer cable which is right here over the battery, but around so that it can fit back up with where it came from the the older digitizer that was over here. Um, like I was talking about before, there's a blue plastic piece that's covering up the, the gaskets. That provides the, the extra glue to get the, the new assembly back down onto it. Um, there was a piece that was up here that had to be removed earlier. Um, and after you get that in, that's a part of the power button. So pay particular attention to getting that back into there uh, correctly. And I'm going to start putting all of the screws back in and putting the wires back to where they're supposed to be. The next area that I'm going to focus on is getting the, the charging port station and the, um, the speaker system, which is at the bottom part of the phone, back into the bottom section. Okay, I just put on the last piece of electrical tape. All the screws are back in. Everything's looking pretty good. It's starting to look like a phone again. Um, I'm going to put the back cover on and then fire it up. Okay, so you can see that the, uh, the back of the, the phone has now been reinstalled. Um, I highly recommend putting the, um, the power button and the, phone, uh, the earphones port in first and kind of slide the front in and then snap it together. I actually had to do it twice because I tried to do it uh, just from the back end and the, uh, the power button would not line up, so I had to actually undo it again and then put it back on. So I highly recommend doing the top end first just to get that power button in there. Um, you can see that I still need to reinstall the, the rocker switch for the volume and the SIM card. And that's the next two steps, and then we are good to start it up. Alright, here's the moment of truth where we uh, try to fire it up and see if we get the phone to come back on. Oh, I heard it vibrate, and there it goes. So again, here is the completely repaired um, HTC One. You can see that there is very minimal scratching that went on to the sides using the method that that I discussed in this video. Um, the only thing that I did not like was when reinstalling the rocker switch, it, um, it kind of stands out a little bit. It does work, and it has a nice touch to it, but I think I was a little bit too 
um, hard on it when I was bending it to try to get it in. And you can also see where I've, I've kind of scratched up a little bit right here when I, I was using that as the starting point to try to get all the glue off and, and it caused it to um, not respond as well as I would like. But the touch screen is working very well. Um, minimal scratches to the side and overall I'm very pleased with this repair.